Nothing personal, kid. Well, it's officially been 20 years since the world of Beyblade came into existence. Well, technically that's a lie because Beyblade Moses is a real thing, apparently. The power of Beyblades have been used to change the course of rivers and oceans. Anyway, today I just wanted to highlight some cool moments from the original Beyblade anime, because although it's essentially just a cash grab gotcha game, you know, like a show made to sell toys and stuff. And man, is that a brilliant idea. Because Beyblades are cool and fun to buy. It's actually got some pretty cool moments that I think are worth showing off. Like this scene, which is wholesome and reassuring in a sense. But that's why I love Beyblading. It makes you forget about time. It makes you forget about your problems. And it makes you focus on exactly what's going on in the stadium. I know it sounds kind of strange, but when you love something as much as blading, nothing else around you matters. Or this scene, which seems like a Darman episode. Bully beats Kid in a game of spinning tops, and then instantly regrets it. Tyson? <laughs> that battle was just like old times, wasn't it, buddy? Hey, now that that's over, can we be friends again? You know what, Max? I miss blading with you just for fun. Honest. Come on, we haven't hung out in a while. That's true. <laughs> yeah, all right then. I just appreciate little things like that. It makes the story feel a little more real when it's applicable to our own lives, of course. Beyblade is one of those generic anime that's overdramatic and whatnot, but if you accept it for what it is, then you realize that it actually has some fairly good storytelling. One thing I liked about this series is that it took an interesting approach, in which it became almost like a fighting anime, sorta. It was just cool and funny to see the characters fight alongside their Beyblade because they were just so into it. Kinda like when you watch esports or the Olympics, and you see how passionate these people are about what they're doing, it almost inspires you. Also, the English version of the series has some pretty sick music. Although it feels a little cheesy hearing it now, there's no denying that it's awesome. I mean, just take a listen. Dude, that was the best part. The English opening is very iconic, but for the longest time I never knew what the Japanese openings and endings were like and they're also fantastic. Definitely worth checking out in my opinion. The only pet peeve I have is that they tend to reuse a lot of the songs, and it's not the worst thing ever, but sometimes it's funny, like how they'll play this dank song during Kenny's fight. Something about it just humors me, I guess you could say. Whatever I try, he's got me covered! How can I fight a battle I can't win? Had enough? Come on, how long do you think you can keep running from me? As Tyson's replacement, you should at least fight back. In addition, there was a movie, but it felt a little lackluster in my opinion. It just didn't offer anything new and it kind of felt rushed. In the English version, they reused soundtracks again. Also, the English version premiered after the dub finished, which is funny because it's a movie that takes place during season 2 of this series. All the characters were cool. There were four. Tyson, Kai, Ray, and Max. Max is cool, though for whatever reason I can't help but feel like he reminds me of Tails from Sonic. Maybe that's just me. Like the human version or something? Ray works for DoorDash and he's totally not a furry. Also, he gets trolled a lot. That's right, at your service, Ray. Tyson! Back off, Ray! No chance of that, dude. Yo, Chief, it ain't nothing. It's time to show Kai how to dance with the Trigger! No, Trigger! 
I'm out, guys! Chill out, Ray. Kai is a fan favorite. I mean, for obvious reasons. His design was always cool. Kind of reminds me of a teen Gohan, in the third season at least. Also, he likes to train Neck, which is super underrated. Also, I really enjoy hearing Kai's voice, simply because his English voice actor does a really good job of portraying the character. Watch me! Um, excuse me? I said, watch me! Because I'm about to show you what I'm really made of! Of course, he also does Tsubasa in Metal Fusion. Drones are attacked now! This isn't over yet. Something about that sounds satisfying, like the raw audio alone. Drones are attacked now. It's hard to get tired of that. The whole cast is great, honestly. I'm one of those nerds that is really into the whole behind the scenes with voice actors and stuff. So personally, it saddens me to know that most of these actors don't do voice acting anymore. At least not anime for that matter. I think Canada does a good job of dubbing anime, but that doesn't happen very often, simply because we don't see much anime in Canada anymore, or something like that. Tyson's English voice is also great, I especially love the way he says, sorry, like genuinely. I kid you not, I think I almost spat my food out when I heard this part, because it caught me by surprise. <laughs> sorry, Brooklyn. But I'm not going anywhere! I never give up on anything! Though, for whatever reason, there's one instance where he says, Sorry, instead of, Sorry. Sorry, Dragoon. I wonder why. Realistically though, he's great as Tyson, and I love hearing him have fun with the role, especially his, Come on, Dragoon! Not so bad after all. Come on, Dragoon! Yeah! Just sounds so euphoric. I think my favorite line might either be Daichi no or Galaxy Turbo Twister. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They're both pretty good. Daichi no! No! Relax, Daichi, that won't solve anything. Here were the two lines again. Okay. He looks a little bit annoyed. Or maybe that's just me. I don't blame him. Voice acting can be tough. I feel like with any show or video game, it must be a little stressful playing the main character of a series, because there's always going to be high expectations. However, I am saddened to see that Daichi no, no, wasn't quite up to par with what we saw behind the scenes. Daichi no, no. You better let go of me, Tyson, or you're next. I gotta teach that guy a lesson. Relax, Daichi, that won't solve anything! In the English version, we actually get to hear the characters' voice change because the cast is growing up alongside with the characters, which is kinda cool, I'd say. It's funny, because the main characters in Beyblade are all voiced by females in the Japanese version, but in the English version, they're all male voice actors, with Daichi being an exception, I guess you could say. Fun fact, Daichi had two English voice actors, but I think the first one was never credited or something because I couldn't find him in the credits of the Beyblade GameCube game. The final boss kind of reminds me of the battle against Xemnas in Kingdom Hearts 2 towards the end of the game. It's so funny seeing these guys fly. Like these guys have superpowers thanks to their Beyblade or something. <laughs> Another thing I appreciate Another thing I appreciate about this particular era of Beyblade are the launchers. Back then, people would use a frickin' RPG just to launch their Beyblade, or a bow and arrow. Though, it wasn't very practical. To me, it was good attention to detail. Nowadays, people use string launchers and whatnot. Although the English version can be cheesy at times, like I said, I just appreciate the love and effort that went into all this for an audience outside of Japan. I could probably go on for hours talking about how much I like this series and point out little details plus funny moments, but I don't want to make this video too long. Anyway, 
I just thought I'd make a random retrospect on the classic Beyblade and acknowledge the 20th anniversary, which is why I've been able to watch these episodes. You can find them on the official Beyblade YouTube channel if you're really interested. So, thanks for watching and like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed. Or leave a comment even. But other than that, have a great day.